been the case for the past several days and will be for the next several days. I don't see any change in the pattern really anytime soon. As expected, just a couple of little showers popping up here. Up in the Florida parishes at the moment, that boundary getting a little bit closer to us. Cloud cover a little thicker there, so a little bit of light rain popping up. But in general, mainly just uh, partly mostly cloudy over the next few hours as we slowly trickle down into the 70s through the evening. Chance for more fog tonight and then warm weekend. We'll talk about this WGNO News at 5 starts now. You're watching WGNO News at 5, New Orleans, very own. We've never had a recall before, so that's a huge deal. A huge deal that could require a huge amount of people and work to get the results before the deadline. Welcome to WGNO News. I'm Kurt Sprang. And I'm Susan Rosgen. The Mayor Cantrell recall petition is now in the hands of the Orleans Parish Registrar's Office, where the staff has begun counting and verifying the signatures. Orleans Parish Registrar Sandra Wilson and her staff have 20 business days to finish the count to decide if there are enough signatures to move the process forward. WGNO's Kenny Lopez says election workers are already preparing in case. Kenny. Curtin Susie, it's no easy task for the Registrar of Voters to count nearly 50,000 signatures. So we went inside to check in with the Registrar of Voters and to see how the process is going. They didn't want to comment at this time. Although recall organizers say there have been some hiccups. Some voters have told them that they've gone in asking to sign the petition and then been turned away. With all of this, Chief Elections Officer Darren Lombard says preparation and organization is key. We've never had a recall before, so that's a huge deal. Orleans Parish Chief Elections Officer Darren Lombard says his office is prepared to handle a recall election if it reaches that point. We're charged with following the law and it's clear as to how this process goes and we're going to follow the law. Lombard says the first step is the verification of the signatures from the Registrar of Voters. If in fact there are enough signatures, then Governor John Bell Edwards has 15 days to declare there will be an election. But it's unknown whether there will be a special election or if it will be placed on the ballot in the governor election in the fall. It could become a very contentious, uh, controversial uh, election. He says Mayor Cantrell has the right to demand a recount if an election is held and voters vote her out. I'm sure she'll have advocates that will be putting out her message as well. So uh, a, a counter to that um, to discourage people from voting for the recall. Lombard expects high voter turnout for a recall election. Even more voters could show up to the polls than they did for Mayor Cantrell's re-election. It could be higher due to the fact it's a very polarizing situation. And timing could play a role in the outcome, something recall organizers recognize. That's why they want a special election. The faster they have it, I think the, the more interest they definitely will have in that election. On Monday, there will be a court hearing to see if the inactive voters, those who have died or moved out of the parish, can be taken off the voter rolls. Now, if this happens, that would lower the number of signatures that the recall would actually need. All right. Thank you, Kenny. Uh, Louisiana Secretary of State Kyle Ardwin says the state's legislative auditor recommended canvassing the state to get inactive voters off the rolls a couple of times in the past. Never happened. Now, as far as counting the signatures, the state attorney general says Kyle Ardwin gave us permission to operate day to day office functions for the Orleans Parish Registrar staff so they can focus on the verification of the recall. Registrar offices from other parishes will also be helping with the verification. And new tonight, Attorney General Jeff Landry says New Orleans deserves better after an assistant district attorney dropped the charges against 19 people accused of illegally carrying a gun during carnival. In a written statement, Landry says in part, violent crimes have wreaked havoc in New Orleans and dismissing these charges sends a message to criminals that they won't be held accountable. According to him, it's no wonder the city is experiencing such high volumes of violent crime and mass shootings.
The NOPD is searching for this man accused of burglarizing a home in Algiers. Police say Eddie Davis entered a home in the 3200 block of Rue Park Fontaine Wednesday with a weapon. The people inside the home claim he damaged the property before leaving and they also told police they heard a gunshot outside once Davis left the home. A dispute is brewing between New Orleans based coffee company Folgers and the city of New Orleans. Next week, Folgers will ask the State Board of Commerce to override the city's decision not to give Folgers millions of dollars in tax exemptions. The community activist group Together New Orleans says if the State Board does overrule the city, the city could lose nearly three and a half million dollars in tax revenue. We are respectfully and forcefully saying, Governor and Board of Commerce and Industry, respect the city of New Orleans. Respect the city council's decision. Dissect, de, uh, respect the deliberation of our school boards and of our sheriffs and their decision to say no to those exemptions. Well, if the state board approves the request from Folgers, taxpayers will be required to make up for that revenue loss which pays for teacher salaries, school supplies, law enforcement, street repair, waste collection, and more. On the North Shore, St. Tammany firefighters are remembering one of their co-workers. Fire Prevention District 1 in Slidell posted this on Facebook, announcing the sudden death of Fire Prevention Officer Taylor Bass. The post asks for prayers and privacy for his family. Loved ones and community members are commenting and calling Bass a hometown hero. Covering the world, today marks the one-year anniversary of Russia's invasion of Ukraine. The war has killed hundreds of thousands of people and millions of Ukrainians are displaced, including a quarter of a million Ukrainians now living in this country. President Biden announced a $2.5 billion aid package for Ukraine today and sweeping new sanctions against Russia. He also met with G7 leaders as well as Ukrainian President Zelensky in a virtual meeting this morning. Over the last year, Russia has killed tens of thousands of Ukrainian men, women and children, uprooted more than 13 million people from their homes. The United Nations overwhelmingly approved a resolution calling for Russia to withdraw its forces Seven countries voted against it, 32 abstained, including India and China. Not everybody agrees with Governor John Bell Edwards' last budget proposal before he leaves office. It's a $45 billion operating budget with more than a billion dollars in surplus money. It includes teacher pay raises and money for first responders. But if the economy slows, along with revenue from some taxes, the Public Affairs Research Council wants lawmakers to be wary. If you have time, if you start solving it now, and you still have next year, um, so you have two budgets before you really have to eat this cliff. Start working on it now. Start trying to find ways you can put some recurring dollars to you know, temporary or short-term expenses, and we have a lot of that. Groups like the Louisiana Association of Business and Industry don't want to see one-time dollars dedicated to recurring expenses. Another concern is the next governor would only have about a year to make adjustments before the next budget is due. According to the Crawfish Price Index, prices are down nearly 40 cents from what they were last year this time. This is the latest look at prices, $3.66 on average for a pound of live crawfish, $5.92 for boiled. Starting March 3rd, we'll have a complete list of prices for vendors across our area on WGNO.com. Business owners say seafood prices might also drop in the near future. They say their customers are eager to take advantage of deals like live crawfish, $3 a pound at the West Wego Seafood Market. That's below the average. Workers there also tell us they're expecting these even more customers to show up once people begin heading home from work today. Now it's also time for fish fries and Lantern Light Ministry sponsored its first fish fry fundraiser today at St. Joseph Church. The fish fry has been part of St. Joseph's ministry since Hurricane Katrina. Lantern Light is organized by local nuns who help the homeless in so many more ways than just food. 
Those funds will help us with our services. We provide services to people that are unhoused, in addition to low-income individuals. We provide two meals a day, Monday through Friday. We also help people with financial assistance for their rent, electricity, and water bills. We help those that are unhoused with IDs, with birth certificates to help them to get into housing programs. And we also have a plethora of other services that we provide. Those other services include providing groceries and toiletries through their food bank. For a complete list of Fish Fry Friday locations, go to our website, WGNO.com. Fridays through Lent, Chief Meteorologist Hank Allen will join us live from some of those fish fries across southeast Louisiana. Still ahead on WGNO News, those are who's hiring for the summer or permanently what you need to know to get interview ready. And a new way to see slavery. How augmented reality on your phone can take you inside the New Orleans slave trade. That's next. with Kurt Sprang, Susan Rosegen, and meteorologist Hank Allen. You can learn about black history through reading or learning about it in a museum. Sure, but a New Orleans artist has created a way to experience black history through augmented reality. It's today's black, special, black History Special Report, sharing our stories presented by Inclusive Care. New Orleans artist Marcus Brown teaches the ancient art of sculpting in bronze at NOCA, his alma mater. But lately, Brown's art has left the physical world for the digital world of augmented reality. Well, all of it starts in a uh, 3D modeling software where you actually model the actual geometry of the person and sculpt the actual person. Brown is developing a series of augmented reality projects about slavery for historic sites in New Orleans where there's only a marker. This historical marker on Esplanade Avenue tells the true story of Solomon Northrop, who was 12 years a slave. But watch what happens here when you download one of Brown's augmented reality projects through an app on your cell phone especially if you download the app at night. Now Solomon Northrup is right in front of you. You can even move between him and the other captives and see the terror in their eyes. 
With a sculptor's gift for the human figure and computer software, Brown is changing the way we see slavery. You know, by doing this with using technology, it brings people maybe that would not have been interested in the subject uh, able to see it. Brown's latest project is augmented reality of the dreaded middle passage on a real slave ship that sailed into New Orleans in 1719. This is black history made uncomfortably almost real. You can find Marcus Brown's augmented reality slave ship when you're at the historical marker on the moonwalk. You just point your phone or your iPad toward the river. The Solomon Northrop marker is on Esplanade near Charter Street. You need a newer model iPhone or iPad to download an augmented reality app and then you scan the QR code that's on the markers. And we want to remind you to tune in tomorrow night for our special honoring Black History Month, sharing our stories. It's a one hour program hosted by LBJ, Christopher Leach and Stephanie Chaynock. It follows our 10 o'clock newscast and all of uh, we are all month long. We are honoring Black History with on our website, WGNO.com. All right, warm again today, that 84 in Slidell tying the warmest temperature of February. That's a monthly record high that we tie. We got more on the way this weekend. Details coming up. And that warmth is something we should be thankful for. Snowstorms hitting almost half of the country. But we'll show you something beautiful that came out of this wintry mess. All right, props to the uh, short-term forecast model that we showed you yesterday afternoon that had uh, just a couple little showers up on the North Shore there. And indeed, that has popped up right over the Hammond area, as a matter of fact. Pretty good little downpour, actually, right at the intersection there of 55 and I-12, heading into uh, really right downtown Hammond. See that red? I mean, it's small, but that's a pretty hefty little downpour trekking off to the northeast, so heads up for that on that commute here uh, as we speak. But otherwise, the rest of the area looking pretty quiet. You hate to call it a summertime pattern because we're in late February, but that's pretty much what we're in here. We've got that big ridge of high pressure over the Gulf 
starting to slide away just a little bit. So on the edge of that, sometimes you can get a little bit of that rain. And that's what we saw popping up. Now, there's a look at the Boulder Village Beach Cam, and we're looking at the potential for another foggy night tonight across the area. And you can see that marine layer is already out there. And it's also holding those temps down a bit along the Mississippi coast. So you've got uh, some upper 70s over the next couple of days for that weekend forecast as opposed to low 80s like the rest of us. And there is that dense fog advisory out there once again for the entire area starting at midnight through 10 o'clock. And it took a little while longer here across uh, the Mississippi coastal areas for that fog to clear out earlier this morning. The rest of us, uh, you know, you get to around 8 or 9 o'clock, it starts to burn off the clouds, to sort of lift where they, you know, the fog burns off and you're left with that low cloud cover. And then you wait for those to burn off as well as you go through the afternoon. But same basic setup here. I mean, a ton of moisture. We'll start to see that fog developing. As you go through, you know, very early in the morning, if not even a little bit before that. So careful if you're on about tonight or tomorrow morning. Temperature still right around 80 across the area. And here's the pattern. I mean, this is wild stuff. You've got, you know, winter weather advisories being hoisted in Los Angeles right now and different stuff out in California because you got this huge trough in the west. So if you got a big trough there, of course, you got the big ridge in the southeast. And that's what we have right now. It's just blocking this weather pattern from moving into our area. So you've got winter as we saw going into break there across a good portion of the country, but not in the southeast and it's not changing anytime soon. So watch out for that fog early tomorrow morning as temperatures struggle to dip into the upper 60s. And then again, same theme as the past couple of days. A lot of cloud cover to start sort of that gray, foggy, gloomy start. Then you get some sun by the afternoon as you get back into the low 80s. I don't see really any change anytime soon. A weak front tries to get in here on Monday, which may lower the humidity just enough to cool those overnight lows down a little bit. But notice, you know, I had some 50s the past couple of days. Looks like it kind of stalls out again, so we may not even get those, but it'll be slightly cooler at night into Tuesday morning. I think a little better shot of that next front coming in Thursday or Friday, which cools us down, relatively speaking, into late next week. But in the meantime, spring continues in the next few days. Yeah, ready for Jazz Fest. Exactly. Thanks, Hank. Yeah. While we are seeing some unseasonably warm temperatures, other parts of the country, as Hank mentioned, not so lucky. The Minnesota Department of Natural Resources caught some incredible video from the snowstorm. Take a look. This is a bald eagle waking up covered in snow near the Twin Cities. Whoa, there he is. The snow could actually be beneficial, though, we're told, for bald eagles, adding insulation for the eggs as they incubate. 23 states from California to Connecticut are on high alert for blizzard-like conditions and bitter cold. ABC's Melissa Adan reports on the ongoing winter storm. This late February winter storm bringing heavy snowfall across the country, as well as thunderstorms and power outages, as seen here in Northern California at just roughly 2,200 feet elevation. In Portland, Oregon, drivers got stuck on the road, some waiting more than 12 hours for highways to reopen. I, I, I parked it here and I got, I got to wait for a tow truck. That's the safest thing, you know. I've been up all night long. You know, I'm tired. It's not only cold, but also dark for these still without power. In some areas, power lines are encased in ice, creating a lot of problems. More than 700,000 reported outages in Michigan. What we really need is everything to melt before the winds start. If everything is still frozen when the winds start, these outage numbers across the state are going to climb. In the Midwest and the Northeast, residents are digging out from the second winter storm. Minneapolis saw over one foot of snow, marking the city's second biggest February snowstorm. A rare blizzard warning issued for Southern California, where up to eight feet of snow is possible in the highest elevations and in the unlikely places. The Hollywood sign seeing a dusting. Six inches of rain is forecast here in Southern California. And aside from dangerous road conditions, there's concern here of possible flooding and mudslides. Melissa Adon, ABC News, Los Angeles. Tomorrow, Nord is hosting a career fair at the Milne Rec Center on Franklin Avenue in Gentilly. It runs from 10 to 1. Hiring managers will be conducting interviews for both permanent and seasonal positions. Applicants must have a recent resume and a government-issued ID. We'll be back with a preview of News Nation after the break.
growing cable news network. Concerns crossing state lines after the devastating train derailment in Ohio. Why a neighboring state is worried and what it plans to do to prevent further disasters. Leland Vitter goes on balance tonight. And it's another Banfield exclusive on the Idaho murders. Neighbors want the house gone while some crime junkies are flocking there. Tonight, we'll tell you the fate of the home and how students feel about the owner's decision. See why more people are turning to News Nation. To find News Nation, go to NewsNationNow.com and click Channel Finder. And don't miss Friday Night Sports with Ed Daniels tonight at 11 on NOLA 38 and midnight on WGNO. It's presented by Delgado Community College and tonight the show will cover state playoffs and soccer and basketball and the WGNO Baseball Classic. And thanks for watching WGNO News right now. Stay tuned for World News tonight. It's next. We'll see you back here at 6.